Since the dawn of time, humanity has looked up and wondered. We stared into the sky and imagined breaking free of the earth, to fly not in dreams but with wings of our own. And long before the airplane became real, it haunted our myths, art, and nightmares. In ancient Greece, Icarus flew too close to the sun. In India's Vedic texts, flying chariots soared across heaven. In China, kite makers crafted the earliest human attempts at controlled flight. But flight was still just a dream. Until a handful of obsessed men and women, risking their lives and sanity, finally cracked the code. This is the story of how we conquered the skies, and why flight nearly killed the people who dared to try. Before I continue, if you are new to Inventions Flex, please subscribe below and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss out on our great videos on ancient and modern tech inventions that changed history. Without further ado, let's dive back in. The first people to pursue real flight were not pilots. They were scientists and dreamers. In the 9th century, Abbas ibn Firnas of Andalusia jumped from a tower wearing wooden wings. He glided briefly then crashed. He broke bones and made history. Fast forward to 1490. Leonardo da Vinci was sketching flying machines powered by flapping wings. His ornithopter design looked like a mechanical bird, complete with rotating screws that eerily resemble modern helicopters. But Leonardo never built one. His genius stayed on paper. It took Otto Lilienthal, a German engineer in the 1800s, to bring flight closer to reality. Nicknamed the Glider King, he launched himself from hills over 2,000 times, recording data obsessively. Lilienthal believed that if birds could fly, so could we with enough science. In 1896, a gust of wind tilted his glider midair. He crashed, suffering a broken spine. His last words were, sacrifices must be made. His death shook the world and lit a fire in two brothers watching from Ohio. Wilbur and Orville Wright weren't rich inventors. They ran a bicycle shop, no degrees, no government funding, just a deep obsession with solving the flight puzzle. They read Lilienthal's notes. They didn't trust them. So they built their own wine tunnel, six feet long, made of wood and cloth, tested with cardboard wings and fans. It was the first of its kind, and it worked. They discovered that earlier data was wrong. The Wright's genius wasn't just in building a flying machine, it was in understanding how flight really works. Lift, drag, control. On December 17, 1903, in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, Orville Wright lay on the belly of their fragile biplane, the Flyer 1. The wind was harsh, the engine sputtered. But then 12 seconds, 120 feet, humanity had flown. It was photographed and witnessed in real, but almost no one believed them. Skeptics called it a hoax. The U.S. government ignored them for years. What followed was a secret, obsessive quest to perfect the airplane in private, while Europe caught wind and raced to copy them. In 1914, war broke out in Europe. Airplanes, barely a decade old, are suddenly military weapons. At first, pilots tossed bricks at each other mid-air. Then came pistols, then mounted machine guns. In France, Germany, and Britain, a new kind of soldier was born, the fighter ace. Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron, painted his plane blood red. He shot down over 80 enemy pilots, stalking the sky with eerie calm. His legend terrified the Allies until a single bullet brought him down in 1918. Planes were no longer flimsy toys. They were tools of war. Engineers now had a purpose to make aircraft faster, deadlier, and more maneuverable. By the end of World War I, the skies were forever changed. Flight had left the realm of wonder. It was now power. The 1920s and 30s were the golden age of flight and the age of firsts. In 1927, a shy, determined male pilot named Charles Lindbergh attempted the impossible, to fly solo across the Atlantic. 33 hours, no sleep, no radio, no co-pilot, just the ocean. At one point, flying blind through fog, Lindbergh thought he saw ghostly shapes, angels, or hallucinations guiding him. He landed in Paris as a global hero. The Lone Eagle had done it. A decade later, 
Amelia Earhart would try something even bolder to circle the globe by air. The world watched in suspense. She vanished over the Pacific in 1937. Her fate remains one of aviation's greatest mysteries. But her bravery proved something vital. Flight wasn't just a man's world, and it wasn't just for war. It was for everyone. World War II turned airplanes into monsters of engineering. Bombers like the B-17 dropped payloads over cities. Fighter planes screamed across Europe and the Pacific. Radar, pressurized cabins, and long-range navigation evolved fast. Then came a game-changer, the jet engine. In 1939, Germany unveiled the Heinkel He 178, the world's first jet-powered aircraft. It could outrun any propeller plane in the sky. Soon after, Britain and the U.S. caught up. By 1945, jet fighters were real and deadly. The age of slow wooden planes was over. With the war over, a question loomed. Could flight become civilized? In 1952, the de Havilland Comet became the first commercial jetliner. It was sleek, fast, glamorous. But three of them exploded mid-air. Investigations revealed a fatal flaw in the square window's pressure fatigue. They'd crack at altitude. The solution was a round window, now standard on every plane today. Then came the 707, the DC-8, the legendary Boeing 747 in 1969, a double-decker flying palace. Airlines boomed, airports exploded, the world got smaller, and flight became not just possible but normal. In 1947, pilot Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier in the Bell X-1. It was violent, terrifying, but he survived and unlocked supersonic flight. Then came the Concorde in the 1970s London to New York in under 3.5 hours. It was the peak of speed and exclusivity, but Concorde was expensive, noisy, and burned too much fuel. It was retired in 2003 after a tragic crash in mounting costs. Meanwhile, rockets, not jets, became the future. In 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first man to walk on the moon, launched atop a Saturn V rocket. The airplane had birthed the space age. Today, over 100,000 commercial flights take off and land every single day. Pilots rely on AI-assisted systems. Air traffic is monitored by satellites. The Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 push efficiency to new heights. And yet, flight still evolves. Drones now deliver packages and conduct military strikes. Flying taxis are in development. SpaceX and Blue Origin are racing to commercialize space. Soon, your trip from LA to Tokyo could take just two hours in a near-space hypersonic craft. We've come far, but the sky is just the beginning. The airplane isn't just a machine. It's a symbol of everything we dare to dream. It connects families, cultures, and nations. It helped win wars and shaped peace. It shrank the world and opened the stars. From ancient myths to jet engines, from kites to rockets, the story of flight is our story of fear, failure, courage, and relentless hope. And the next time you hear a plane pass overhead, remember, it wasn't always possible but someone made it real. If you enjoyed this journey, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next dive into the tech inventions that changed history.